If you want to change the way BricsCAD looks, you can, and it's easily done through the settings dialog box. Let's see how. To control the way that BricsCAD looks, you use the settings dialog box. So from the settings menu, I choose settings, and then there's three major sections here. One is for settings that control the way the drawing is created and looks. One is for how dimensions look. And the third one is how the program operates. So when you click on that, you jump down to the program options section. And as you scan the uh, various titles, you can see what it affects. Workspace, quad, ribbon, file, structure, display, rendering, and on and on it goes. To see what's inside of one of these sections, you click the plus sign and that opens it up. So I've clicked it in front of quad and you can see all the options for quad. Uh, you can move this back and forth if you need to see more or less of what's going on, as well as you can change the size of the dialog box itself. And when you select an item, you see down here information about it. While we're in the quad section of the settings dialog box, let's take a look at how we can modify the way it looks on your screen. So here we are back at the settings dialog box. Um, let me show you a few things you can do. For example, uh, you can make it smaller than uh, what it is on the screen. And to do that, you change the width. This controls the uh, number of columns wide the quad is. Uh, here you can change the size of the icons displayed by the quad, small, large, or extra large. So let's uh, click on small. The icon space, that's the spacing between the icons. Let's make that narrow. Click the X to see what the result is. So I've got the quad here and you can see it's quite a bit smaller. Let's go back into settings and see what else there is. These settings down here control the rollover tooltips, whether or not you want to show them. So if we turn that on and then close this, there's the rollover tooltips. Now, you don't have to go into settings to turn that on and off. You can come down here onto the status bar and turn RT on and off. So now when I go back to this line, you see the quad and not the rollover tooltips. So what we're looking for is to change the background color of the screen. So I am going to type in background color, and then I'm going to click these arrows to find the next instance. And here we go. Background color of the drawing window when working in model space, it says in the help area. So to choose a different color, I click this down arrow and here's colors you can choose from as well as click select color to choose from any of these 255 colors available. So I'm going to select a dark gray because that's what some people like. Click OK and as you can see in the background change takes effect immediately. If you want to change it back to what it originally was then just click this and then choose white again. While we're in the display section of the settings dialog box, let's uh, look down a bit further. You can change the uh, background color of this paper space, but most people keep that white because that's the same color as the paper you're printing on. And there's a bunch of settings through here for uh, changing the colors if you happen to use the DWG compare mode, which compares two drawings and illustrates the differences. Here's some options you might be interested in. These affect the color of the X, Y, and Z axis, uh, whether for the uh, UCS icon or for the cursor. So you can change those. You can change the rubber band color. Right now it's a, it's a gold, as well as whether or not the rubber band should be dashed or solid. I'm going to change the color to, uh, let's take magenta and turn this off just to see what the effect is like. So we're going to move this here to there and there you can see the solid magenta drag line. Thank you. 